in one minute. Uh, good morning and welcome to the November 21st County Commission meeting. If you'd stand for the pledge, please. Uh, good morning again, and uh, we'd like to welcome you to the County Commission meeting. If uh, you need a listening device. Uh, you can get some help with uh, Craig or Carol. And uh, before we start our routine business, we'd like to recognize a very uh, valuable part of the county team. Aaron McGowan was named just recently the South Dakota Prosecutor of the Year by the state, uh, I think it's the State Prosecuting Association, correct? You're going to be the first one to be able to test that microphone to see if you get electrocuted if it touch it. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Aaron. How many years have you been the state's attorney? I'm in my ninth year. You're an awesome servant, and the time commitment and uh, your uh, input and support of this system is just incredibly uh, welcome, and thank you for all that. November 8th, and Aaron was recognized, and it's a special honor when you're recognized by your peers, because this is something that your peers voted that you are the Prosecutor of the Year for the South Dakota State Attorney Association. So we want to congratulate you, and I think Aaron would have, I'm sorry, Marty Jackley um, had it worded very well. He said, Aaron has proven himself as a dedicated prosecutor and public servant for Minnehaha County, providing a strong voice for victims of crime. And Aaron had been in private practice before. He's in his um, third term as our state's attorney, and we're pleased to recognize you. I know you received a plaque a short time ago, so just congratulations. And we're honored to work with you, and thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate the recognition, and as I said when I accepted the award at the State's Attorney's Association Conference, it's an award that I share with uh, two families, my family home. Yeah. Uh, what you don't see is a lot of things behind the scenes and the sacrifices they make for me to do the job that I truly love, and also the sacrifices of my work family that I see more than my real family. <laughs> uh, we have a incredible group of dedicated uh, men and women that work tirelessly uh, to protect the most vulnerable citizens in our society, to uphold justice, and seek accountability. They do a ter terrific job, and this award is shared by them as well. So thank you for the recognition. Thank you, Aaron, for being here. Thanks.
With that, we'll go to routine business. Uh, the first item is to consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you, Trish. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Wow. Uh, item number two is to approve the commission minutes from November 14th. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any changes or corrections? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanim unanimously passes four to zero. Uh, bills to be paid of $1,225,485.77. Bills. Second. Wait, motion and a second to pay the bills. Any comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item four, our reports. The auditor's account with the county treasurer as of October 31st is filed and a Minneapolis County Regional Juvenile Detention Center report for October is also filed. Item five is to consider a motion to approve routine personnel action. That's my motion. Second. A motion and a second to consider the routine personnel action. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, there's no applications for abatement, no notices and requests, no planning and zoning notices. And now we're to item nine, which is the <coughs> compromise for lien. The first one is DPN 04866 for $764.38. I'm sorry, Melinda, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Good morning, Melinda Storley, Commission Assistant. Um, so this petition that's before you, DPN 04866, in the amount of $764.38 is for poor relief. It's presented by an applicant who is requesting to have his name removed from the joint lien because the uh, lien fees were incurred by his ex-wife after they were divorced. He has presented a, di a divorce certificate dated 1976. The lien amounts were incurred from 1997 to 2001. Um, He'd like to have the lien uh, remain in the name of his ex-spouse. However, register of deed records show that the ex-spouse deceased February 26, 2003, and the clerk of court show no record of probate. The lien remaining in the name of the ex-spouse will be noticed to the Minnehaha County Auditor's Office so that it can be added to the annual end-of-the-year compromise of liens, liens for deceased persons, should you okay. choose any, to. Any questions for Melinda? Is there a motion? Make, make a motion to remove the applicant's name and um, put the remaining amount on the ex-spouse, leaving no payment against the petitioner. Second. Thank you. Any other questions? With that, is there a motion to approve? Say aye. 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 Oppose, oppose nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, item B. It, DPN 055996 for $1,295.20. Lien is presented by a couple who is in the process of purchasing a home. The closing date is scheduled for January 10th, 2008. The lien represents poor relief only for assistance with rent. The, um, in his narrative, he expressed that he, his spouse became disabled in 2014. He was the caretaker and had missed a fair amount of work causing them to file bankruptcy. They've since reestablished their credit enough to be able to afford to buy a home. Their total current assets right now are $11,550 and liabilities equal $6,600. The total income shown in their 2016 income tax was $42,826 with a refund of $1,291. The purchase amount of the home is $1,000, um, um, pardon me, uh, $163,000. The applicant is requesting a compromise and release of the lien in full upon payment of $650, approximately 50% of the lien amount. Thank you, Melinda. Does anyone have any questions for her? Uh, if not, the, the uh, if the lien holder is here, they may speak, but they don't need to be identified and they can stay at their seat to talk if they would like. They don't have to speak, but if they would wish, we'd be happy to hear from them. So. Can I just ask a, sorry, not to interrupt, but 
Okay. Thank you. Are there questions for the gentleman? Any questions, uh, Commissioner Kursky? No questions for him, but I do have a comment. To sure. Pass, okay. You know, compromise for liens are always a, an interesting backstory, I guess. And you don't need to stand. Yeah. And um, you know, when you read through some of the underlying facts and what happened, and you know, we get to be the judge and jury a lot of times, and in, in these circumstances, and. Uh, the circumstances what brought this compromise here are, you know, very understandable. And I, you know, I look back at, you know, could could it have happened to anyone? And I have a hard time compromising this lien for for half. And I'd I'd make a motion to compromise the lien for a dollar. Is that a motion? It is. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it for conversation. Okay. Um, my comment would would be. I understand where you're coming from. Um, we'll be, by compromising this lien, we'll be putting these people on the tax rolls and we'll be um, receiving property taxes, which we we need to receive some now from rental property. Um, I'm not sure if I wanna go a dollar. I think about that a minute. But I, I get it because um, they're, they'll now be paying into and being productive people of, of our society and paying taxes. So. And if I may, the reason I say a dollar, I think he's, from his story and just reading the paperwork, I, I think it's going to be cutting it very, very close to being able to qualify for this loan and you know, the down payment and the other factors that go along with this. And I appreciate the extra effort that is being made by the applicant. And I, I, I just want to give him the hand that I think is is deserved in this case to, to make that work. Commissioner Bender? I, I think in light of um, the actions that we took last week where we were really looking at not considering poor relief and and you know holding people more accountable when they when they we've provided legal services that I would be supportive of Commissioner Karski's motion in this instance as well because that's the the only relief that we're looking at here. Other comments? If not, we have a motion and a second to uh, release the lien for a dollar. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously pay clears, and you can go buy a house. Thank you. Welcome. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Item C is DPN 033580 for $1,202.50, and DPN 034788 for $5,001.81. This was deferred from last week. Melinda, do you want to give a uh, the combined total of these two liens is $6,204.31. Last week you requested a breakdown. Uh, you wanted to know what was poor relief, what was legal representation, and a record of, of their payments. So if you see on the memo, I added a little um, table showing that uh, the that she had $810 in poor relief <clears throat> and $392.50 illegal representation and had made no payments on that lien. He had $234.71 in poor relief and $5,127.10 in legal representation, but he had made an attempt uh, to make payments and had contributed $360 towards that lien. Um, the individuals were not married during the time they incurred each of those, but they're here presenting it jointly because they're attempting to refinance a home. However, there is no real estate transaction at this time. They're on hold until they can uh, resolve this lien. Um, as I had mentioned last week, the petitioners explained in their narrative that they're trying to move forward to improve their quality of life in spite of their past and hardships with their son. Their combined annual income is 62600 their total assets are 
and liabilities are $127,104.95. The total income of the joint income tax for 2016 was uh, totaled at $54,350. They're requesting a release of both liens in full with no payment, or again, we're willing to contribute full payment, uh, pardon me, requesting compromise and release of both liens in full upon payment of $600, approximately 9%, just over 9% of the combined lien. Thank the you. The petitioner is here to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, is there any questions, first of all, for Melinda? If the petitioner would like to make comments, we would certainly be happy to hear from them. You just need to stay where you're at is fine and make the comments and we would be happy to hear from you. Thank you for coming. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Is there a motion or? I just want to make a comment. Um, Certainly. There's a lot of public defenders on here, but some of them are, or most of them are over 20 years old. There's a couple that are, I mean, I think the most recent one is over 14 years ago. Um, I think you, you could never really excuse um, when you have to use a public defender, but I gather that they were basically kids. They were very young when these things happened. They were over 20 years ago. Um, and I would be willing to compromise some of that um, public defender fees. Obviously the, um, the ones for rent assistance and stuff, I would be willing to let go and um, maybe knock off some of these public defenders because if they didn't continue to write anyway, they would be written off. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Karski? There was an offer that to pay more. I was just curious, if, what, if, is there a dollar amount attached to that, ma'am? Have you thought through that process so you don't really have a dollar amount, is that correct? As, and you don't need to make a decision right now. If we can defer this, but we'd prefer not to. You don't need to be embarrassed. That would be my thought. That was that was the number that's coming to my head is a thousand dollars. It defers a lot of. I mean, it, it um, releases a lot of those twenty-year-old liens. Um, puts them on just the more recent ones, which, like I said, most of them are twenty years old. Other comments, Commissioner Kersky? You, know, you know, when I read through, and this is an extensive. Um, 
amount of paperwork, I guess, you know, with everything that goes through in here. And I looked at, um, and I have to ask our attorney, what's the, what's the term that you use when you are second on a mortgage? Um, subordinate. Subordinate, thank you. I talked to one of my friends who's a loan officer and ab about this whole process and you know why we couldn't subordinate a county lien to a s first mortgage and keep the lien and I mean because obviously the the lender is concerned about getting paid and having this lien there but my understanding from talking to him is any lien first of all it used to show up on a um, when they did a credit statement they knew if you had a lien against you but they no longer know that until they go through the title company and that's after the process of ordering the appraisal and everything else is done and the, the individual may have quite a bit of money involved in the, in the loan closing by that point so the, the these liens don't show up until that time and as long as you have a lien or a judgment against you a lender will not borrow you money. We cannot subordinate ourselves to that lender. So um, learned something a little new yesterday, I guess. Um, that being said, some of the, while these charges are, are older, some of them are fairly you know, serious in nature. And, and it, to compromise the lien for nothing, I was having a very, very difficult time with. Um, there's a debt to be paid here. What's the magic dollar amount? I don't know. A thousand sounds like it could be a reasonable dollar amount to make this work, but that's just my thought on the matter at this point. Commissioner? Well, I mean, these are always very difficult, and, um, you know, we really <coughs> always encourage people to make payments. This, you know, $5, $10 a month really just demonstrates a lot of good faith. But I agree with Commissioner Heibiger here that, you know, really the bulk of the um, court appointed attorney's fees are from 1997, so we're talking 20 years ago, and uh, these are folks who have um, apparently at least not been looking for assistance from the county for quite some time. So, um, you know, we always have to balance the interests. So we're a steward of taxpayer dollars, and these are taxpayer dollars, and so we need to try to um, preserve those dollars for future people who are going to need assistance. Um, but in this instance, I would support a, um, a compromise for a payment of $1,000. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Does anyone else have any other comments? My point of order, Mr. Chair, if we have $1,000 is too, too deep here and all is how would you like the allocation made? To one or the Can other. Can they just both be forgiven for, I mean, I don't, I don't particularly care Does that they- Does it have to be? Uh, just pro rata. Operated. Just apply it pro rata. Five hundred for each on each DP. Uh, each of uh, the there's a twelve hundred two dollars fifty cent, and then there's a five thousand. So I mean, I, I would take the thousand dollars and apply it pro rata, percentage wise, to those statements, and then have both of them. Our uh, resident state's attorney says we can do it fifty fifty, and we'll be fine. First of all, I don't think you need to be embarrassed. I, I, anybody that comes to this and says something takes a lot of guts, more than I would have, frankly. So uh, I think that says a lot about your character. And since you haven't done any issues or had any issues for 20 years, that also takes courage to change your life. So I'll support this. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Benning, I just- Oh, I'm sorry. 50-50 I don't think really works in this circumstance given the, on a do the dollars involved. I'd, I really would prefer that they be applied pro rata on a percentage basis. Is that okay with the motion? I agree. I okay with a second? Second. Okay, whomever did one and two, <laughs> I don't know. I lost track. We have a motion uh, to apply $1,000 pro rata to clear both DPNs. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. We're at opportunity for public comment. Does anyone have any public comments that they would like to make about an item that is not on the agenda? 
If not, we'll go to item 10 to consider a motion to authorize the museum director, Bill Hoskins, to sign an agreement between Siouxland Heritage Museum and Yankton College for exhibit design services. <coughs> Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Bill Hoskins, director of the Siouxland Heritage Museums. Um, I brought an agreement today uh, between Yankton College uh, and the Siouxland Heritage Museums for the museum to provide exhibit design services for Yankton College. Now, we do exhibit work on contract every year on a small basis. Uh, last year we did work for the City of Deadwood, uh, Fort Sisseton State Park, the Mitchell Archaeological Site, uh, but they were all fairly small projects. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this to you today is this is a project that's projected to be over multiple years um, with uh, preliminary design completed in 2018, final design in 19, and, and then if we go forward to production and installation, that would be in uh, June of 20. Uh, also, the dollar amount potential is, is fairly substantial, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm bringing it to you today. All expenses and revenues associated with this would be accounted for in the Museum Special Enterprise Fund. Uh, all the full-time labor that's, that's spent will be reimbursed to the operations budget from the Enterprise Fund, which is our standard practice. Um, Thank you, Bill. Questions? Anyone have any questions for Bill? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Item 11 is to authorize the chair to sign amendment number one to the design services agreement between the county and JSA engineers and land surveyors to add platting and wetland analysis services for highway, <coughs> excuse me, one. I have a 149 reconstruction project. Shannon Schultz. There's a magic spot here. Maybe Trish has a touch. Oh, Trish is good. <laughs> <laughs> She's in charge of IT, obviously. <laughs> Hydrogeomorphic analysis, which then in turn uh, determines how functional classification units are used in the mitigation. Uh, we've done this before. This is common. Uh, we've used Tatanka Wetland Bank and um, <coughs> Clark to holder of JSA. This could be a comedy by the time we're done. <laughs> we're all the way down. Chris, you just have to stand there and hold it for another couple hours. Janet, do you want to just take a second and see if Tony can fix this? Again. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> touched the mic. <laughs> Please continue. So I, I finished there with the Clark as a sub to JSA and, and their fee for to complete their HDM analysis is $2,645. Continuing on with uh, the environmental review process, uh, there's a small subcontract under JSA <coughs> with Prairie Lakes Archaeological to complete archaeological and historical surveys and to the tune of $2,400. And then finally, uh, as part of JSA's work, they have to prepare H-plat exhibits 
And so what that is, is we're taking places where right of way is, in, is less than 100 feet wide width corridor for our 6.2 mile reconstruction project, Highway 149, and we're getting out to 100 feet. And there's gonna be 24 parcels that require such H splats. And so combined with all three of those adds to our contract is a $28,180 addition, bringing the total fee for preliminary engineering and final design services to $345,521.72, should you approve that amendment. And that is our request. Thank you for your patience, first of all. <laughs> any of you want to have any questions for Shannon? FYI, this would be built in 2020 and then paving in 2021. Wow. Is it typical to do an archaeological service? You know, it kind of varies. Uh, we take advice from the Corps of Engineers. They're charged because they're a sister federal agency to in the National Historic Preservation Act, and then it, they sublet that to the State Historic Preservation Office. And when we make preliminary discussions with them, Sometimes they say, hey, you know, don't worry about the archaeological, but on this one, they kind of said, we probably need an archaeological. Um, typically, highways are in disturbed ground areas anyway, uh, and then farm fields, of course, disturb ground too, but when they see we're taking a corridor and widening it, that was the red flag. If we already had a 100-foot corridor, my opinion would have been said that they would have not required archaeological. Thank you for the explanation. Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, item 12 is to consider a motion to approve change order two for highway improvements for Crack Seal 2016 project. That is correct. So this is a construction, basically an, a, an extension project for construction services, as Commissioner Benning has said. This is a 2016 original contract. Towards the end of the year in 16, they did not get done with their work, so they spilled over into 17. And so at that time, we said, well, would you honor the contract bid prices to do more work in 17? And so that's what they agreed to do, and that's what we did. And so we added 19.5 miles, which is in preparation for things that we're going to overlay microsurface and chip seal in, in, in 18. So we did the crack sealing this year. And so that total uh, of about uh, $204,500 uh, for the 19.5 mile addition brings that contract to a total of $520,896.10. Questions for Shannon, Commissioner Bender? So I'm just confused, Are th did they already do the 19.5 miles? Are they gonna do the 19.5 miles in 2018? It's actually done. Okay. So this is to make correct that amount. And then in a couple weeks, when we get the final paperwork, we will come forward, or actually what we'll do is we'll make a final payment to the contractor. And we've been told by the contractor that in the end, um, they used a little bit less material than they thought they would need. So the contract total will end up being less but at this time, um, the contract <coughs> needs to be amended to that amount because that's what we asked for is 19.5 miles, but they ended up using a little bit less tonnage or, excuse me, pounds of cracks and material per mile. So uh, that will make more sense uh, the next time either DJ or I are in front of you explaining what happened. Other questions? Does that mean, Shannon, that the additional contract is a 2018 allocation, or is it, where It would have been 2017 budget dollars for crack seal. So we, we took the 2016 project that was contracted, and we just simply added to it at the agreed upon um, contract unit prices. So in essence, we just had them extend their contract a year. One other question, where are we at? Do we know with the 2017 highway budget, are we under? Or are we? I would, I don't know that for a fact, but just because we haven't spent all the dollars for 2017 in terms of uh, completing all the payments to contractors, I would think that we're under at this time. Um, in the end, because we got good bid prices early in the year, if you remember, uh, I expect that we would be under our budget estimate. 
but um, DJ can probably answer that more fully with a, a question. Motion to approve. I guess I have a question if we should defer this until we know where we're at with our annual budget and our final numbers before we decide where this should have come from. Does that make sense? I don't have a problem with that. Uh, would you do that for us and then bring it back, please, before the end of the year? DJ just texted me. Oh. He's apparently watching. <laughs> uh, he said our we're under more than $3 million on our 2017 construction budget. Can we record that text? <laughs> we recorded Shannon recording that text. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Yep, that's Second. good. Thank you. And tell DJ thanks for the answer. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 13 is to consider a motion to deposit proceeds from the sale of the surplus highway department items on various public auction sites to the highway fund or to the general fund. Hi again, commissioners. So there was a, I'm going to, sorry, I think DJ might have some more, um, nothing. Excuse me. So there was a, we, we, we sent some surplus materials that you guys all approved to, to be sent to surplus. Uh, we did three auctions. One was at Gomans, one was at Interstates, and one was through Iron Planet. The proceeds of which uh, are in your agenda packet. And by the way, you guys approved all this stuff to go to um, surplus September 12th. And so uh, we made probably better than expected. You can see what we had for value. And just for example, on the books, we had a, 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 a 1978 trailer that carried 50 tons. We estimated a book value of $1,500, and it actually sold for 13000 mm -hmm. So we, we did pretty good, and I think we, we, that's generally been the trend is our construction equipment ends up bringing more than we have in our books. So in the end, uh, there was some proceeds for sale, and you have the option of, of putting that into the highway fund or into the general fund. Any questions for Shannon? Commissioner Heiberger? To comment, that's a really nice pot of money. That's a, a big amount of money. That was over $72,000, <laughs> but I would make a motion to put it back into the highway fund. That's been what we've been doing for the last few years. And I think that stealing from the highway fund to put into the general fund is not a good practice. So that's my motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the deposit proceeds, if you will, into the highway fund. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion unanimously passes. Thank, Thank you, you Sharon. Item 14 is a briefing on the J Juvenile Detention Center third quarter report. Jamie. Good morning, Jamie Gravitt, Juvenile Detention Center Director. Uh, I presented you with a report that summarizes what's been going on at JDC up until October 31st of this year, so through the first three quarters. Uh, it also gave you a little bit of information about uh, projections that I see possible in 18 and some possible budget issues that I may present you in the next budget cycle. Uh, in summary, our intake calls completed are down, our admissions are down just a little bit, but our bed days and average length of stay are up. Um, we contribute this to the number of youth being direct filed into adult court. Uh, we've seen a uh, significant increase in those numbers this year. Uh, we're hoping that that trend does not continue. Uh, but what happens is their cases get drawn out because they're gonna try to come back to juvenile court and it draws out the time that the cases are going on. Uh, these are cases like murder, manslaughter, first degree rape, first degree burglary, first degree robbery. Um, so these are kids that are going to be in our custody during the completion of the cases. Uh, our community supervision numbers are starting to go up. Uh, we currently have 22 on community supervision today. Uh, Lincoln County is starting to use this a lot more than they have the last couple years. Uh, we do charge Lincoln County for this uh, service. Uh, so we've seen an increase in or an unexpected amount of income from that during this year. <clears throat> uh, 
as far as 2017 budget, uh, we're right on track to hit the number that we projected. Um, it's been steady with last year's amount, even with these increased bed days. Uh, we've been able to manage our budget and keep it at the same amount. We've basically stayed steady for the past four years with the exception of taking on shelter care. Uh, some of the challenges that we've found that could affect us in 2018 is with these adult cases going on, they don't handle court out at JDC for those cases. So we're making a lot more transports to the courthouse for those. There's been times where we've had to transport two or three individuals at the same time and we don't have a vehicle capable of doing that. Uh, we've been able to uh, loan a vehicle from the sheriff's department or the jail. They've been very cooperative in that manner. Uh, however, we're worried that there may come a time where they have conflicts and can't do that. Um, so transportation is a challenge in that situation. It also pulls staff off our lot, off the main floor of uh, our secure area, uh, which could affect our ratios that we need to maintain. So those are our biggest concerns with if we see this trend continuing. Um, we have a couple of aging vehicles that haven't been too expensive yet. We've been able to maintain, but it's that feeling you get that it's just one thing after another of little things and the values of the vehicle are low. It's a 1999 Lumina and a 2004 Kia. Um, that's, that's the main summary of the report. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Does anyone have any questions for Jamie? Commissioner Heiberger? I'll just make a comment that over the last six years as we've made changes in how we run our JDC that there's been um, a lot of really good things to come out of it. That is, you see our bed days have gone up. That's because we're keeping the most violent and uh, scary people in the JDC now and that we're using our shelter care and our home supervision to keep kids out, out of JDC where data shows us by putting low level kids into JDC with these high level people you just exasperate where they're going um, so we're able to keep kids out of the system and um, Jamie was going to look for me in the future here and find out what is the, re the reoccurrence rate with these kids if we're actually putting them in in shelter care and home supervision are they reoffending and what's the occurrence of that and stuff so that's something he's going to look into in the future for I can us. I can give you a brief answer on that uh, we don't have a lot of data on that yet because the shelter care with LSS is so new. But in the calendar year 2017, 53% of the kids that go into shelter care are one-time visitors. So we're not seeing a return of them as much. Um, but we don't have data to look back one, three, or five years to determine the long-term effect of shelter care or our alternatives if they're really keeping the kids out of further trouble. We're hoping they are. Uh, we're seeing success with the Evening Report Center, uh, so much so that kids want to continue in that program after disposition, but it's not possible. It's a predisposition program. However, LSS applied for a United Way grant and uh, to try and continue that post-disposition to try and keep those efforts going in the evening to support these kids, and they're having a meeting in the near future on that. I believe uh, Commissioner Heiberger wrote a letter in support of that. and. Uh, so we're seeing positive effects with kids. The, the Evening Report Center helps kids find jobs. Uh, they're helping them with homework. Uh, they're giving them an evening meal that they might not usually get. So, so we're really working with the kids to do the right thing uh, for them. We look at it as an investment in the future. Hopefully these programs that we're putting them in will prevent them from going into the deeper <laughs> end of the system in the juvenile system. And long term, we're, we're really hoping is that we keep them out of jail and prison in the future. I think I, if I remember right, when I started six years ago, there was a lot of conversation started before that about potentially building a significant addition to the JDC. And now because of alternate programs, uh, we're keeping people out. And that <coughs> conversation has completely gone away to be honest for now anyhow correct but more importantly I think we're getting those kids in the right place 
and it sounds like the success rate is fairly significant to keep them out for the second time. So that's a good thing for everybody. Yeah. When the, the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative project or philosophy was put in place, at that time we were looking at, I believe, uh, building a, an entire new facility to house 100 youth uh, at a cost of about 15 or $16 million. Uh, and we've been able to avoid that and we've actually been able to reduce our capacity at JDC from 54 secure beds to 39 secure beds. Awesome. It's a good trend. Any comments or questions? Thank you for the report. Thank you. Look forward to hearing from you again. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, you too. Uh, item 15 is to authorize the chair to sign an easement agreement with Sioux Valley Energy for access to Minnehaha County property legally de described as printed, uh, containing approximately 20 acres more or less, all shown by the plat. Craig Dewey, good morning, Craig. Good morning, Craig Dewey, Commission Office. The easement uh, before you is for Booker's Prairie Park, which is a county park. Uh, the land was donated by the Booker family, and as long as it uh, remains a public park, uh, it can continue to be held by the county. Uh, Sioux Valley Energy is requesting an easement to rebuild some power lines that were damaged in an ice storm earlier this year. And as I did a little bit more research, this situation is not uh, uncommon where uh, past easements didn't end up being officially recorded. So now that the line needs to be repaired and upgraded, Sioux Valley Energy is requesting this easement. And uh, it would run along the southern uh, part of the park from the southwest corner to the southeast corner. If you have any other questions, we'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Craig? I'd make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the easement agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Item 16 is to consider a motion to accept or reject a single bid for purchase of property located at 908 Northwest, legally described as printed. The uh, recording plat is the governing board may reject any or all bids. However, the governing board accepts a bid, it must be the high the bid of the highest bidder carol muller um, good morning commissioner heiberger commissioner bennigan commissioner karski yes before you today is the, the um, information about the bid opening that we had last week on the 908 northwest avenue building and land you declared them surplus in june you had an appraisal done of them done on that f on that particular facility which came across as 2.45 million you directed us to uh, work through doing a sealed bid process on this building. We opened the bids on November 15th at 10.30 a.m. and the auditor's office received one bid for $1.1 million from Bender Commercial Real Estate Services that was representing Dal Rummel Village. And that bid of $1.1 million represents 45% of the appraised as is fee simple as estate market value. So. With that, we need to have action from the three of you today as representing the commission as um, what you'd like to do with that bid, either accept or reject bids. Uh, I just want to make sure that people are aware that uh, Commissioner Bender has recused herself from this conversation. Um, are there questions for Carol in this whole process? Commissioner if we um, reject today, then we will come back and have a discussion with possibly Commissioner Barth here and Commissioner Bender on um, what we are going to do going forward. Yes. Okay. Yes, you have that option. And the other options that are available to you are either a public auction or listing, um, listing with a broker, which you have done in the past. If you recall, the Hall Land a few years ago was listed with a broker. Any other questions? I'm not happy with the amount that was offered. Um, I guess if you're looking at bare ground, maybe that would be reasonable and to take down the building or to remove the asbestos. Um, I'm not really sure which direction to go just because obviously it's an old building and it's tired, but um, we do have an appraisal that it's worth more than 1.1 million. I guess I'm interested in what other people's thoughts are because I'm really not sure that I would like to accept this bid since we have other options. If I may, to add on to your comments, my understanding structurally this is a very sound building unlike maybe other buildings that we own that 
could be better off pushed in. So I, I you know, yeah, I, I don't think there's been enough time. This is a large commercial real estate transaction. I think we need to allow this greater opportunity for for other, and maybe another process so that we can increase the revenues that we see from this. And I, I'm definitely not happy with you know, taken, I would not accept a bid like this either. Comments? Chairman. Well, I always think we should take a chance on cash. Um, I don't like the bid price either, but um, I'm not sure waiting is going to change it dramatically. There is uh, an operating cost to leave the building unoccupied and it deteriorates, as we all know, over time. I'm willing to defer it till we hear from Commissioner Barth. Um, a public auction might be a process we could go through. Uh, we did list it before, I think. No, this building has never been listed. Oh, this one has not? Yes. Uh, we offered to have people come and correct. receive a commission if they came up with a customer, correct? So I don't know how much more we can do to advertise this and the land price is probably what people are interested in and they're really not too excited about the building which i understand but uh, i'm willing to wait until commissioner barth comes back and we can talk about this in more detail uh, unfortunately i don't know that we're going to see a larger price because it's where it's at versus what it is You want a motion to defer for one week? I'm not sure what the schedule, of when is Commissioner Barth going to be back? He will be back next Tuesday. Okay. Next Tuesday we also have the signing of the bond documents for uh, the jail related issues. So uh, maybe we ought to wait two weeks. Is that a problem, Carol? You yeah. know, my only thought is I, I don't know the protocol in terms of how long you wait to respond back to the bidder. That would be my only question, and I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that two weeks is a long time for anybody in the development business, but I don't know. if we, if you want to do it next week, that's fine with me. I make a motion to defer one week. Maggie, did you have a comment on it? Okay. I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, if you if you deferred it one week and wanted an additional week, you could always defer it good again. Good point. So okay. Yep. I'll, I'll make a motion that's to good, defer yeah. one week. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to defer the conversation for one week. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 17 is county liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports? I do have one, but could you maybe grab Commissioner Bender so she knows that she can come back in? Thank you. Um, my only report would be a got an email from Equalization Office and that they said that the 2018 egg land values would increase by an average of 2.9%. Um, I'm sure we'll have people upset again about that, but just to remind our audience that that is a five-year um, production average and they had some really good years. You know, we know from the Secretary of Agriculture who spoke to the chamber um, about a month or so back that there are some difficulties in the egg community this year and it is going to be um, a stretch for them, I think. But to remember that they've had some really good years and, and we do need to s save for the bad times. And um, I have sympathy on them. But um, anyway, just to let you know that um, egg, egg values will increase by an average of 2.9 in 2018. Thank you. Any other liaison reports? Commissioner Bender. I'll just report briefly that I was um, able to attend the town and townships meeting last night. The room was full. Um, just very appreciative of folks that are willing to serve on their local township board. That's a, um, it's it's where local government is at its finest because you're you know right there dealing with your neighbors and uh, it was very impressive to see so many people turn out to learn about developments and. Um, affecting the townships and to hear those folks and I, I was also very impressed by uh, the Minnehaha County employees that were there that made presentations 
Uh, Lindy Young did a nice job explaining where we are on the ambulance and uh, was able to recruit a couple of volunteers to sit on a committee to look at funding, which I think is, is very helpful. He did a nice job explaining um, how the county's funding affects the local ambulances and, and how they're likely to be shortfalls possibly as the medical system and reimbursements continue to change and that we've got to be proactive in looking at uh, ways to um, provide those services and was particularly um, pointed about townships being participating in that and there were, they expressed an interest in in providing that service to their constituents so I thought it was a good conversation I thought the highway department did a really nice job as well so I just wanted to thank everybody who will show up on a Monday night of Thanksgiving week I think gets extra credit points so I, I appreciate their service thank you any other liaison reports uh, any new business any old business with that I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session for contracts litigation and personnel so moved second motion and a second to go into at 9 50 well it's gonna be another few minutes before we sign documents in 10 minutes to go into exec session for contracts litigation and personnel all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed motion unanimously passes thank you <laughs>